விஜய் Okay. Uh, good evening all. Uh, I hope uh, everyone is keeping stay uh, in this, you know, this uncertain times. Uh, my name is Vijay Kumar and I'm here today to present a brief session on uh, high altitude trekking. Uh, the entire session is going to be in English, so bear with me. Uh, right. Before I begin, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Sivanathan and Karthik uh, for inviting me to in this session let me quickly introduce myself uh, is it uh, only english or tamil pesa mudiyuma uh vijay i think you can mix up with the tamil and english so as a normal uh, casual thing because here most of the time of the session was in, in uh, tamil only so yeah, sure, uh, tamil english kalandu pesu adukku na tamil la solliruken avanaala nare per vandirukanga english la sonna adha adha mari audience vaanga Okay. Uh, I'll try to do that. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, right from my, from my young age, uh, I've been passionate about two things. One is computers and the other one is travel. And till date, uh, I've been successful in uh, balancing both my interests. uh honestly there's a lot more uh, that goes behind the scenes uh, which i cannot discuss right now because that's out of scope of the session uh i'm a computer science engineer by uh, education and uh, and a software developer by profession and besides my professional responsibilities i am a passionate traveler travel writer and a photographer my photographic genres include adventure photography astrophotography nature and wildlife i share my travel stories on my website explorewithvijay.com which i'll be sharing later in this uh, in this uh, presentation session i've extensively traveled across uh, you know the length and width of our beautiful country when i say travel it's all backpacking style predominantly backpacking style which means i avoid luxury travel options and and i prefer uh, you know home stays and camping tents this in turn lowers my overall traveling budget my love for mountains began somewhere around 2014 and since then i've done about 10 treks and out of these 10 treks uh, seven are himalayan treks the highest altitude the uh, i've been uh, in all of this uh, 10 tracks is 19200 feet this is uh, this is something achieved in uh, during my trekking expedition to stop kangri in ladakh in 2017 few of my photographs have been featured in uh, night geo traveler india and uh, outdoor ma- outdoor photo outdoor traveler uh, that's a us based uh, photography magazine and both these photographs uh, were featured uh, for the respective uh, photography contests uh also I've been an integral part of uh, the content management team with uh, the indian mountaineering foundation uh, you know it's it's a premier foundation or an organization in india uh, for all mountaineering based activities and i was uh, you know quite happy being associated with them uh, for their annual event called mountain film festival uh, back in 2018 so that was my uh, short introduction uh right and before i proceed i would like to uh, put up a disclaimer uh, the content i'm presenting here today is based on my personal experiences and everything i've been uh, i've learned from people on the mountains uh i am neither a doctor uh, no, nor a physician here so 
as the as the as the you know, session proceeds, you will know why did I put this disclaimer here. So this is my uh, partial list of uh, trekking destinations uh, arranged in uh, reverse chronological order, meaning the latest is on the top and it goes down to the oldest one. The first in the list is the Kochala trek. Kochala is a uh, uh, high altitude mountain pass uh, in Sikkim. Uh, the highest point of Kochala Pass is at uh, 15,100 feet. And from, from this point, you get to see the southeast face of uh, Mount Kanchenjunga. Mount Kanchenjunga is the, is the, is the world's uh, third highest mountain. And uh, this is also a base camp for those who are aspiring to scale the mountain, you know, scale Mount Kanchenjunga. The second in the list is Kedar Kanta. It's a mountain peak in Uttarakhand. Uh, the summit, uh, the highest point of summit uh, is about 12,500 feet. Uh, from the summit, you get to see the magnificent uh, 13 peaks of the Himalayan range. So that's a very spectacular view, actually. The third in the list is, uh, is in the Western Ghats, the Mesa Pulimala. Uh, technically speaking, Anamudi is the highest in Western Ghats. Uh, this is also the highest uh, in India outside of Himalayas. Uh, so, due to its uh, you know, reserve for its forest, areas, the trekking is prohibited in Anamudi. So, technically or statistically, the second highest peak on the Western Ghats is uh, is, is, is called uh, this Mesa Pulimala, which borders uh, the Idukki district in Kerala and Teni in Tamil Nadu. Uh, the summit is at an altitude of uh, over 8,600 feet. The fourth in the range is uh, Stoke Kangri. Stoke Kangri is the highest mountain in the Stoke range of Himalayas in the Ladakh region. Uh, I mean, it's a very popular uh, trekking peak. Uh, people often uh, consider this as uh, a non-technical uh, foray into high altitude mountaineering. It's quite, uh, it's, it's a quite difficult uh, trek, but people, but I've seen people uh, underestimate, uh, you know, uh, this trek because of its, uh, uh, you know, uh, easy, easy, easiness of uh, scaling the mountain during the summer, summer months, but it's quite difficult. The highest altitude of, uh, of, uh, the highest point in the summit is about 20,000. Jay, I can't hear anything. Am I audible? Yes, yes, please. All right. Fine. The next in the list is the. Yes. The next in the list is the Shivalik Hills. This is the, the outer range of, of Himalayas, which uh, stretches from the Indus River in the east to the, uh, to the Brahmaputra River in the Indian subcontinent. It's again a very fascinating uh, Himalayan range. The sixth in the list is uh, the Sarpas. The Sarpas is, is in the Parvati Valley of Kulu district. Kulu districts uh, comes in uh, Himachal Pradesh in India. Uh, the word sir means uh, lake in the local dialect. So, so during the course of this trek, uh, one must pass through you know, a small frozen lake. And this lake is called uh, the sir. The next in the list is Sandakfu. Sandakfu uh, is the highest point uh, uh, in the in the West Bengal state, so the the highest point of summit is nearly approximate uh, to twelve thousand feet. Uh, an interesting uh, aspect of this trek is that it borders, uh, uh, you know, the Nepal and Indian uh, sides of the border. So you zigzag into each country, and there is and and you know. Uh, there is not uh, 
you won't see any physical barriers between uh, the two countries. You can hardly distinguish uh, the international border. That, that something which is very fascinating to know. The eight in the list is uh, Hamta Pass. Hamta Pass uh, uh, is again in the Himachal Pradesh, uh, and, and uh, you know, the highest point of the pass is is at, is at approximately fourteen thousand feet. The last in the list is Kodachedri. I think uh, most of you would have heard of this name. Uh, it's uh, it's in the Karnataka. Uh, it's the 13th highest peak, uh, or probably I think between 10 and 13th highest peak of Karnataka. So why trekking? Um, honestly speaking, who like who likes being confined to one place? Right. The current lockdown is one such uh, classic example. Even otherwise, uh, humans like moving all around so different people have different reasons some you know some some would like to uh, discover their inner strengths uh, probably for others it's a it's a way to stay away from from all the monotonous lifestyle they've subjected to in the cities and for others it's to experience the natural beauty of uh, the planet and yes, photography also, you know, plays a major part. For me, um, it's all about solitude. I have an uh, introverted personality, so naturally, I enjoy being in solitude. And uh, trekking is the the best place that you can enjoy solitude. Um, there are many benefits of trekking. The foremost benefit is uh, the silence in the Himalayas, which I admire the most. Uh, you know, I've become so addictive to it, uh, addicted to silence, that I that I seldom uh, interact with anyone during uh, the course of my trekking. And uh, and with the passage of time, it has become a habit when I'm in, when I'm at home too. So. Uh, and yes, uh, back in the cities, um, you know, we we get uh, so much attached uh, to societal status, such as uh, you know, reputation, and all those fancy designations in the professional world, that we seldom enjoy life in its uh, truest form. Uh, you know, trekking, especially the high altitude trekking in the Himalayas, uh, helps uh, get rid of this. Uh, worldly pleasures, at least for some time. And yes, it, this requires some uh, conscious efforts by the self. So let's understand what happens at high altitude. Uh, before you even begin planning for your first uh, high altitude trekking, you must understand uh, what it means and a and, and, uh, whole bunch of challenges you must have uh, or you have a deal with it. The first and foremost aspect uh, and changes uh, are changes to the air pressure and weather. You know, as you go, go up or gain altitude, there's a gradual change in uh, barometric pressure. You know, you get to experience severely cold weather and intensely warm weather both at the same time. You know, the days are intensely warm and the nights are intensely cold. So your body must... Uh, get adjusted to these extreme conditions in, in pretty much a very quick time. Uh, so there are some challenges, you know, uh, in order to uh, experience both these uh, climatic changes. Most of us, uh, you know, spend the majority of our time in our life at the sea level and uh, take for granted the many aspects of everyday essentials. Uh, when I say everyday essentials, uh, I am referring to the air we breathe and the portable water. You know, as we gain higher, gain altitude, I mean, uh, you get to know the importance of uh, the air and the water as a whole. 
So proper acclimatization holds the key for a pleasant and safe journey um, throughout your uh, trekking. And there are no shortcuts to uh, you know, acclimatizing. A typical preparation must begin at least two months in advance. Um, and always remember, irrespective of your age, uh, the number of high altitude trekkings you have been, you have done, you are always vulnerable to you know getting sick even before your arrival at uh, you know, the high altitudes. But let's discuss the physical aspects. Uh, it is very common for uh, anyone who, who who comes from the sea level, like all of us in Chennai, Mumbai, Delhi, whatever. We are all at uh, almost the sea level to experience a phenomenon called uh, altitude sickness. Uh, altitude sickness is a very generic term. Uh, it covers a variety of ail ailments. Uh, in its basic form, altitude sickness refers to uh, uh, what is called as acute mountain sickness. Uh, there are more life-threatening ones uh, of this altitude sickness. And that's called uh, the HAEP and HAZE. HAEP stands for high altitude uh, pulmonary edema and the other one stands for high altitude cerebral edema. Each of these phenomena are experienced uh, owing to a variety of reasons. The most common ones are being uh, gaining altitude too quickly or spending large amount of time at high altitude. When I say gaining altitude too quickly, say for example, you took flight from Chennai and you're landing at Ladakh. Chennai is barely at 50 feet from the sea level. Ladakh is at 11,000 feet from sea level. So the difference in air pressure is so drastic that your body will not be able to you know, uh, uh, get enough oxygen for, uh, for itself. So you're bound to experience some kind of uh, altitude sickness as soon as you uh, come out of uh, the aircraft. Um, and, and as uh, I... Vijay, I just yes? want to ask. Tamil like it, no? And I'm gonna repeat it. Actually, the altitude mountain sickness. So you say that people coming out of uh, aircraft, air flight, land, the very low, warm mode, they are going to get the very tall shots. Like, ah, the marine issue, she create. Not only can I repeat it. Ah, immediate it can happen. Or maybe or a thirty forty minutes after on the effect. So the per can I don't know. So the per can I don't know. So the per can or thirty minutes, forty minutes, sometimes one hour, sometimes two hours. No matter how long. So again, uh, so bodily condition. So we are all predict panna mudiya do. But they are sure, sure to experience all this. Okay. If you leave Ladakh, you can get the flight with the Kerala Delhi land, I think, right? Um, ama. So even the uh, leave Ladakh, we have that same experience. Ama, that my flight level, na? Ama, same experience. Ama. So that's why that's why. Uh, especially above uh, 8,000 feet, uh, you should land in the land. You should spend some time outdoors, not indoors. When you spend uh, okay. time outdoors, your body has the capability to you know, pick up the changes and adjust accordingly. It will know mm -hmm. the lesser amount of oxygen here, lesser air pressure. It, will, you know, it, it needs some time to get used to the conditions. So, okay, that is the one number one direct immediate flight land. The Maripona. How about going on a roadway? Roadway Lapona could have the effect or ma? Roadways Lapona effect irkom, but Andalav Kirkada because you're gaining altitude gradually. Huh. So, so, so you suggest that people should go via a roadway, right? Slowly, slowly we get acclimatized on the climate and our body on the for example, you can use the time on the road. Or, mm. you enjoy travel, uh, taking the flight. You can the destination mm -hmm. one day spend on the Either way, it's your choice. Anyway, you have to spend some time outdoors. Okay, okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, fine. Uh, let me proceed. 
Fine. An important pointer to remember is uh, uh, with every thousand feet gain in altitude, uh, there is a drop uh, in air pressure. We can approximately say 1% drop in, in, in the oxygen levels. Um, fine, let's. Uh, I'm going to say something about a little bit about science here. Uh, very short one to exchange to to understand something something else here. Uh, so, the every cell in our body needs oxygen, right, in order to live. As you may be aware, uh, the air we breathe contains oxygen and other gra gases. You know, it's a mixture of uh, oxygen and other gases. So once this oxygen gets into the lungs, this oxygen is moved into the bloodstream and uh, carried throughout your body. At each cell in your body, this oxygen is exchanged for a waste gas called carbon dioxide. So your bloodstream then carries this waste gas that is carbon dioxide from, the, you know, from each cell back to the lungs where it is removed from the bloodstream when you exhale. So this is the actual process when you inhale and exchange. I mean, when you exhale, when you inhale, the oxygen gets in for a gas exchange inside your body through the lungs. And when you exhale, it's the CO2 that's coming out. So that's the gas ex short, very brief explanation of what goes on inside, how the gas exchange happens. Your lungs and respiratory system automatically, you know, automatically perform this uh, vital process. Uh, so the altitude sickness uh, begins with a phenomenon called hypoventilation uh, you know this is a condition which occurs when there is little ventilation for uh, gas exchange to occur you know, the, the gas exchange that we just discussed now there's little very little ventilation mm, you can think of uh, you know hypoventilation as a, as a severe uh, migraine headache you, know? you can feel the pain right migraine think of it as severe migraine but uh, in general it that's not a migraine. When you're high altitude, it's not a migraine. When you get a headache, it's called uh, the altitude sickness. Uh, when you're exposed to such conditions for, you know, for, for extended duration of time, uh, it leads to a different phenomenon called hypercapnia. So what happens with hypercapnia is, uh, you know, the carbon dioxide tends to accumulate in the body. This is because uh, the carbon dioxide, you no, know, because it gets accumulated uh, more faster than it is clear. This is where the body starts retaining up, uh, abnormally high levels of uh, carbon dioxide in the blood. Uh, so due to hypercapnia, the blood becomes acidic in nature. Anything that is acidic is not good and it must be converted to alkaline. In general, as you all know, or must be knowing, alkalinity is good for the overall health. Typically, people on the hills have a higher life expectancy compared to the ones at sea level. This is because of the right breathing technique. So breathing technique plays an important role throughout your stay in high altitudes or throughout your trekking. So there's a small, simple breathing technique uh, that I follow. Uh, which is recommended, you know, in case you take a trip to the Himalayas for a prolonged, uh, uh, you know, time. So the breathing technique goes this way. Uh, inhale as you do normally and then exhale longer. So what this does is it gets rid of excess uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, that will making way for alkalinity to prevail in the system. The other benefit is that it decreases your breathing rate, which is good for your overall health. That was all about uh, the physical aspects. Uh, coming to the psychological aspects, which is more important than the physical aspect. Mm, when you're uh, hiking in the Himalayas, you're all alone, you know, all alone in the meaning you are you know, away from any outside help. If something gets wrong, you may have to rely on your self-sufficiency skills especially when uh, you know uh, uh, in such circumstances uh, fear and self-doubt uh, uh, can be potentially deadly on the other hand if you are mentally strong 
the most logical tip to word is complacency, casualness, and uh, you know, overconfidence. And let me uh, give a classic example of this uh, complacency. So when I was uh, uh, doing my uh, uh, trekking expedition uh, on the Stoke Kangri range, so we have uh, an over-enthusiastic, uh, an overconfident guy. So this guy was uh, uh, very much physically fit and mentally strong that he seldom stayed with the group. He did not obey the, you know, uh, the track leader's uh, advices and he, and he was in his own terms. So he was able to scale successfully the summit of Stoke Kangri. You know, the summit is at 20,000 feet and it takes uh, a whole lot of uh, physical and psychological uh, strength to reach to the summit itself. Uh, so while he was able to successfully summit, on his way down, he lost, you know, he lost his consciousness and he, he fell down and he rolled for about uh, 800 to 900 feet, nearly, sorry, 800 to 900 meters which is nearly a kilometer and he hit a boulder. He, since he was rolling, he was not in any, any form of control. So his head hit uh, the boulder and uh, he went in coma. So he had to be airlifted. So this is what happens when uh, uh, you know, you're overconfident or complacent. You know, the psychological aspect has to be in a balanced state, neither uh, uh, in uh, self-doubt or uh, neither in uh, over-complacency. So that was a small little example I wanted to give when discussing this uh, psychological aspect. Um, fine. So when you are in, uh, when you, you know, when you typically at uh, 8,000, 9,000 feet or above, uh, you are bound to experience a condition called hypoxia. Hypoxia is a condition where uh, the body is deprived of uh, adequate oxygen at the tissue level. So what this happens is uh, it, uh, it can lead you to, you know, or you can experience mood swings or sometimes uh, sleep deprivation. The other aspect in high altitude is that uh, your body tends to lose water uh, twice as fast as sea level. Because you're, because you're intensely into some physical activities like uh, hiking or running maybe sometimes. Uh, so you need to urinate more often. Uh, so it's again a small piece of science here. Uh, the kidney sends uh, uh, you know, more water on the bladder which reduces water retention capability of the body. Uh, so this makes blood slightly thicker. So when the blood gets thicker, the body produces a great number of red blood cells. Uh, the body does this to increase the oxygen carrying capacity. So this means that at high altitude, hydration is more important when you're physically active. Uh, so you'll have to, you know, uh, hydrate more, more often, keep sipping water, at regular intervals of time. Uh, the other negative aspect of this is that you, you, you got to urinate frequently and sometimes uh, this means that getting out of uh, the camp camping tent uh, multiple times during night. You know, this can be a challenging uh, aspect because the temperature outside, uh, you know, it's uh, really hostile. It's darkness everywhere, it's biting cold, and most, most likely you're, you're bound to get out of tent on your own. You know, uh, these are all physical challenges, uh, sorry, psychological challenges that you'll, that you'll have to manage. Yeah, so this is, uh, I think this, I, I have already discussed this uh, in my you know, previous slide itself. 
let, let me get back to the next slide. This is again uh, the hape and haze. The hape and haze are uh, the more serious form of uh, acute mountain sickness. In, in, in its simplest term, uh, hape is something uh, which is related to lungs and haze is something which is related to mind or brain, sorry. Uh, and both of these are related to you know, leakage of fluid to lungs and brain. And uh, if you experience the acute mountain sickness or hape or haze, uh, you know, uh, there is no uh, uh, you know, tested way to get it cured. So you'll have to either uh, you know, uh, come down to a lower altitude and uh, get used to you know, higher uh, air pressure there. That's the only way to uh, get, get rid of uh, all these uh, symptoms. Uh, you know, you must have uh, seen in some documentaries, maybe some Everest uh, uh, camping that, 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 that has gone wrong. Some people might have uh, been airlifted. The, all those cases are either hape or haze. The acute mountain sickness can be, you know, uh, overcome uh, by taking enough fluids all through the day. But hape and haze are like, quite dangerous and we have to immediately go down to the lower altitude. And yes, as, is, as I discussed you know, earlier, self-motivation uh, plays a key role. Uh, hello? Yes? Uh, I'm Hari here. Yeah. I have one question. Yes, please. Uh, do every person take a free medical checkup before taking my altitude? Uh, I'm sorry, your voice is too low. Do every person take pre-medical checkup before before taking high heart rate? Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, before uh, embarking into any trek, uh, you are required to submit uh, a medical certificate. This certificate is you for uh, you know for your uh, uh, for any you know respiratory diseases uh, related illness such as. No asthma, high blood pressure. You shouldn't be having any of these uh, ailments. Uh, so that's uh, the predominantly something that you'll have to ascertain medically. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I've seen. We will produce the certificate to the government or the local authority. Uh, I'm sorry. To the government or to the local authority. Any any private clinic will do that. Okay. Certainly, government. Sometimes I've seen people, uh, you know, fake this uh, medical certificates. By doing this, they are putting their life in risk. Because I've seen many accidents take place in my recent uh, trekking last year October. Uh, I, a guy had come with a fake certificate. He had high blood pressure. So what happened was he, the summit is at fifteen thousand feet. So he was able to make it to the summit, but he had a heart attack and he died. So who, who, who is responsible at that time? No one can be held responsible. The trucking company cannot be held responsible because, because the person who had uh, come for a trek had you know, carried a fake certificate. So he is the only, he is solely responsible for, uh, uh, you know, any activities that he does on the mountains. Okay. I think they uh, they collect some uh, disclaimer letter or something like that, right? Yes, disclaimer. Um, operation button or sign wang rang That's right. Exactly. Okay, Vijay can go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's some correction in this slide, the third pointer. The physical lacks can be overcome by a strong mind, not strong body. Uh, then uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so then you say, whenever you feel like yeah. okay. Yeah. I'll try I'm, I'm most comfortable with English. Ah, puri de, puri de, yeah. yeah, no issue. Yeah, so 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 this high attitude trekking is all 
is more eighty percent about uh, psychological uh, and twenty percent about physical. So you may not you may not uh, be you know physically really so much fit. You don't have to go to gym. You know, have the six packs and all those. What is ne really needed is uh, a very strong mind, which doesn't go in in complacency mode. So how do you train your yourself for high altitude trek? Okay, I have uh, split this into three categories. And this is something I follow rigorously for all my trekking. So pre-trekking. So this usually begins at least two months in advance. More than enthusiasm, yes, training is vital. Uh, it, it all starts with the physical training. Uh, it, it, uh, you know, it can be a combination of running, cycling, swimming, or any one of these and combined with the aerobic training. And apart from physical, physical uh, aspects, the breathing techniques. Uh, the breathing techniques are two categories again. Um, uh, before, uh, before I begin my actual journey to the you know, trekking destination, uh, there are certain breathing techniques I follow. This is uh, like a long, gradual breathing and breathe out. You now you breathe in for quite long of time, longer time and breathe out for the same amount of time that you took for breathing in. And the next uh, way of uh, the breathing technique is you breathe in quickly and breathe out quickly, both quickly. And when you do this, you make sure your belly contracts and uh, your lungs expand as you breathe in and contracts as you breathe out. This is a great method for, uh, you know, uh, in increasing the oxygen intake. And this also, in, you know, in turn, uh, strengthens your respiratory system. So when your respiratory system is healthy, you are, you are less uh, susceptible to cold, co cold, cough, asthma, or any uh, respiratory related illness. So this also increase, uh, improves your uh, immunity system. The other uh, breathing technique is uh, shorter breathe in and longer breathe out with uh, alternate nostrils. Meaning you breathe in with one nostril and breathe out with another. So what this technique does is it helps get rid of uh, the excess carbon dioxide from the lungs, thereby preserving the alkalinity of the blood. This technique is most likely to you know, bring benefits for you when you're in high altitude camping in the night, you know, at, at those stages, you'll have to practice this type of breathing. Uh, I think I missed out some, uh, something during the, discussing the physical aspects. Uh, typically, you know, I don't hit gym. Uh, you must do all your physical exercises in a non air conditioned environment. Uh, so I, so I basically do jogging and cycling on alternating alternating days. Uh, you should be able to, you know, uh, complete five kilometers jog in thirty kilometers. I mean, sorry, thirty minutes. You can start with one kilometer jog and you know gradually increase the distance. Uh, the goal is, you know, uh, you should be able to complete five kilometers without shortness of breath. You shouldn't be stopping in between. You should continue uh, continue to jog until you complete five kilometers. This is a very simple technique that I follow and it has done miracles in each of my trek. Uh, on cycling, I do, this is something I do on alternate days uh, uh, before uh, I actually get out of the, my home city. Uh, the minimum distance I cover is 30 kilometers a day, which is more than enough for uh, any trek. Right, so what should you pack in for your trekking? Again, I have divided this into three categories. So easy understanding. Clothing and footwear. So the thermals is the first layer of uh, your clothing. So it comes in 
pass upper and lower followed by a fleece jacket the fleece jacket is uh, something thicker than the thermals and it uh, and both together this, this thermals and fleece jacket help preserve uh, your body heat the next one is quick dry pants as the name suggests uh, you know you sometimes during the trekking you are bound to cross the river so chances are there that uh, you might uh, uh, wet your uh, pants or maybe if it rains you are bound to wet your uh, outer clothing so quick dry material material would be helpful in uh, those uh, situations uh, no it it doesn't take more than 15 20 minutes for uh, for a completely wet uh, you know uh cloth to get dried when you are using this quick dry material the next one is the warm jacket warm jacket is the outermost uh, layer of your clothing which this is helpful uh, when you are walking against wind or when you when you are out in the night you know usually the summit uh, attempts happen during late in the night you usually get out of your camping tents by you know uh, 9 am sorry 9 pm but probably sometimes beyond midnight to my last uh, summit attempt was uh, started at around 2:30 am in the morning uh, so at these times you'll have to have a really warm jacket in the balaclava this is something which protects your head your face and neck from uh, from the oncoming uh, winds and waterproof gloves this is very important uh, typically there are three points in your in your body that lets the body heat out one is head the other one is your uh, you know the palm and the next one is your feet all three points all these three points will have to be you know protected with ad- with adequate uh, clothing so for palms the waterproof gloves make makes an excellent uh, material and for the feet is the woolen socks typically woolen socks are not for daytime use this is for uh, for for camping inside your tents so typically what i do is uh, for daytime i use cotton socks cotton yeah cotton socks and when i'm in the tent i remove the cotton socks and uh, put in my woolen socks to get us you need at least minimum 50 liters capacity backpack uh, the trekking poles are something uh, you can think of it as additional legs you know instead of three instead of your uh, two legs you know you can add, have additional uh, uh, legs it's like additional support i i usually carry one trekking pole some people carry two trekking poles for additional support and it it all depends on you how many you want to carry headlamp this is again an important uh, accessory as i said uh, the summit attempts are usually done after uh, you know or really early in the morning when there is no light so this headlamps are uh, an excellent accessory for you to stay safe and be with the group next one is the uv protection sunglasses so when during the daytime when you're walking on the snow uh, you know the, the, the sunlight that is reflected off from the snow they are very harmful you know it, it can make you blind it's that it's that uh, you know uh, bright so you need a uh, uv protected sunglasses to protect yourself from those harmful light and you will need at least two 1 liter water bottles so so typically what happens is you you start from one camp to another camp uh, with your with both both of your bottles filled um and sometimes we don't get any water source in between the two camps so that's why i said two one liter water bottles instead of one water bottle and coming and, and the most important with your shoes you will need a good uh, you know hiking boots with ankle support 
the ankle support is important here because uh, you know uh, you're not working on on some plain surface about 95 percent of the time you you you'll be working on uh, uh, you know uneven surfaces like boulders rocks and it is important that you protect your ankle uh, if you twist your ankle you know it's it, it gets really annoying you will experience pain and it takes longer to uh, uh, to get rid get rid of the the you know of the pain. Coming to food and water, um, you will need to pack in you know high you know high calorie food, typically high in carbohydrates like uh, rice, dal, and anything that is uh, that can provide heat to the body and uh, rich in carbohydrates. Typically, you will not be provided with uh, you know, high protein food because proteins require high amount of oxygen for uh, the digestive process to kick in. So typically, you will be provided with only high calorie, high calorie food. And this is only, and, and you'll not be given any you know, uh, non-vegetarian food because again, the non-vegetarian food is heavy. Uh, the protein content in it will make the digestive uh, you know, juices in your body to uh, take longer than uh, uh, available time to, for it to completely get digested. And the water purifier, uh, this is something uh, uh, that I don't carry. Instead, I carry uh, a, water, uh, a water filter. What happens is uh, when you run out of water, you get plenty of river streams. Uh, I mean, you can directly fetch the water from the streams and uh, you know you can drink it. But some people uh, tend to be overconscious and uh, they carry some uh, water purifying tablets and they and it, you know, get, it gets uh, dissolved in the water and it acts as a filter or to uh, to keep the germs away. So this is, something, this is something not needed and I don't carry that. Instead, I carry a traditional filter fitted into my water bottles. And coming back to tablets. Uh, there are many tablets for motion sickness and altitude sickness. And I have never uh, taken any of these because both of these, uh, you know, these tablets tend to have uh, side effects. For altitude sickness, there's a very popular tablet called Diamox. Uh, and if you are taking this Diamox tablets, you're supposed to be taking one to two days in advance before uh, you actually start your climb. What this drug uh, does is it uh, reduces the potassium levels in your body, in your, in your blood. Uh, so low potassium levels can uh, the side effects I'm saying now, uh, a low potassium level can make muscles feel uh, you know, weak or you're most susceptible to cramps. Uh, sometimes you will also experience uh, abnormal heart rhythms. So these are some uh, side effects of uh, the drugs you may, be, you may be taking. I've seen many people take it. Uh, it gets rid of uh, uh, the altitude sickness almost immediately, immediately in the sense uh, in less than two hours it kicks in, but it also has this side effects. Fine. Uh, I think I discussed all these, the pre-trekking aspects, during the trekking and, uh, and yes, post-trekking, this is something I did not discuss. At the end of every day, you're supposed to be uh, stretching your uh, muscles. This is very important, uh, you know, uh, because it uh, it prepares your muscles for uh, for the next day. It you know it flexes your muscles and uh, keeps in good shape. And right after your trekking, it's important uh, uh, to consume carbohydrates in the form of food. Uh, and this is uh, very important for uh, rebuilding the lost glycogen and muscle proteins.
yes coming to photography in high altitudes photography is always a choice uh, i typically carry multiple bodies and i don't recommend swapping lenses with a single body uh, because there's a risk of uh, you know condensation taking form i usually carry a combination of wide and ultra wide uh, zoom lenses and and i carry a carbon fiber uh, <coughs> travel tripod mine uh i think mine uh, is less than uh, a kg it's very light and it's equally sturdy as well and i remove my uh, you know the camera next uh, next strap that comes in instead i carry a separate mini bag for camera this is very handy uh coming to batteries i typically carry <clears throat> uh two fully charged uh, batteries and once you are out of uh, the base camp there is hardly you know any source of electricity for you to charge any of your electric electrical equipments uh i know in the market there are few solar chargers uh but they don't work honestly i have tried that you know you will get sunlight but it's only sunlight there is no intensity of heat there so the solar chargers won't work in high altitudes uh so i typically carry two fully charged batteries and and i and and i turn off uh, pretty much every non essential uh, uh, uh settings on my camera that uh, that takes the battery charge away two fully charged batteries i can you know it comes for me for approximately 8 8 to 10 days for me and that's a trick that i follow to keep uh, uh my batteries and i'm losing the power in them do when i go to sleep i remove remove the batteries and I keep it inside my sleeping bag uh the sleeping bags they tend to you know uh preserve body heat and most of the most of most of uh, this uh, sleeping bags they they with uh, withstand cold up to minus 30 degrees so so that's a nice place to uh, uh, preserve your body heat as well as uh, your camera battery fine so that was all about uh, you know getting uh, ready for high altitude and and, th and this is some some of my uh, uh my best photographs so this is a uh, uh picture taken from the summit of uh, kochala in sikkim this was taken in uh, october 2019 uh we started our uh, uh summit attempt at around 2:30 am uh yes it was biting cold uh, but at at the end of uh, you know uh, close to four hour uh, trekking journey in the darkness we were greeted greeted with uh, uh with this beautiful scene that you are seeing in right now in your screen uh the the peak that you are seeing is the the south face of uh, mount kanchenjunga the mount, Kan mount kanchenjunga the summit of mount kanchenjunga is uh, is approximately 28000 feet the summit you are seeing on uh, left top is that 28500 feet approximately how oh, as uh yes and as i was clicking this picture you know as i had i had to remove uh, you know take off my gloves you know it was within within few seconds your hands you know uh, they go numb you can hardly feel anything so there are many fascinating challenges uh, you know whenever you take uh, photographs such as these on high altitude uh this is again uh, mount kanchenjunga Do hello yes this uh, photography with the gloves is always a big problem is there any other uh, gloves uh, meant for us is there a... uh, 
And honestly, no. Uh, I mean, uh, the, you know, uh, when you remove your gloves, or you know, the gloves are tend to be thicker to protect you from the cold waves. So I have not seen, or I don't think there is uh, there's anything in the market. Uh, you know, oh, my doubt is, can we put on surgical gloves and over that that gloves, uh, surgical gloves, if you are having, you can have like a click is easy. Huh? Uh, surgical gloves you can have, but uh, it will have no effect because you know, surgical gloves uh, cannot withstand the, the intense cold. The... No, no, no. What I'm telling, surgical gloves first you have to put uh, over that is uh, warm gloves, whatever uh, we are having heavy gloves. So during photography, you can take out and put, na. Uh, so that time, uh, this much effect will not be there, na. Uh, yes, you can put. Uh, uh, surgical gloves again will have no effect in, uh, in the cold, cold climate. It is, it is equal to having the, you know, bare hands. Okay. Seen people uh, using that. <laughs> surgical gloves or or any um, cotton gloves. Many people use that, but it doesn't have any effect. It's as equal to the bare hands. If you remove the gloves for a few 10-15 minutes, your hand will not be working properly. No? Now it looking. Yes, you will feel the numbness. You will not experience anything. For, okay. for quite some time, until you put back your gloves in. Now these are quite, these are some nice experiences that you can only feel you know, and it's quite uh, you know interesting when you feel all these uh, you know strange phenomena. And yes, uh, this photograph was uh, again shot from a different uh, uh, place. The picture that you see is again the Mount Kanchenjunga, taken at sunrise. Uh, uh, and yes, we. We started from our camps, I think around 3, 3.30 a.m. in the morning and we reached the, this place at the 5.30, 5.36 in the morning. So it was again a two and a half hour uh, trekking. This was taken from a campsite. Uh, the campsite was uh, a bit dark. Everyone went into the campsite uh, after dinner. So I was in... Uh, you know, with every trekking, uh, I like to capture the night sky. So this was again shot in 2019 October. Uh, so the the light streak that you see uh, is the International Space Station uh, passing by the campsite, and and yes, again uh, capturing these night scenes are very tricky. Uh, especially with uh, setting the focus. So what I do is uh, I, I ask my friend uh, uh, with a light source to stand at a distant at a distant place and set my focus, and then ask him to move, and then I change my uh, you know composition to make sure uh, everything is in focus. So that's how I set my composition in pitch dark. The other way of setting the focus is uh, when the sunlight is still available. Uh, you'll have to keep uh, your camera position steady at uh, at just before the uh, you know the sunset, and then make your camera stay there in that position. Most often, the heavy winds is likely to disturb your focus when you do when you when you follow that aspect. So, and also you you are at a risk of uh, you know losing your battery charge very quickly because your camera is in, out in the cold for longer duration of time. So typically, I I keep my camera inside my camping tent and only take it out when needed. So this was one such uh, uh, picture of the night sky. This was taken early in the morning. I think around uh, five in the morning. You yes, the light comes very early in you know at high altitude. Uh, this beautiful layer of uh, layers that you see in the bottom half of the image and uh, the hues of uh, different uh, colors on the top of the image, you know, it doesn't stay for long. So you'll have to be really ready with your uh, camera settings and uh, everything that you want to achieve with your composition. This particular uh, condition, you know, stayed for not less than 10 minutes 
So you'll have to be really you know, quick with your uh, uh, settings, camera settings, because the light and weather as well changes very quickly in the Himalayas. This is one of my favorite photographs. Uh, the picture that you see is uh, Mount Kabru. Mount Kabru is along the lines of uh, Mount Kanchenjunga again. This was shot uh, uh, from the summit of uh, Gochala Summit, Gochala Pass, sorry. Uh, yes, this is again one of my favorite pictures uh, shot from the Kedarkanta Summit in Uttarakhand. Uh, we started from our summit, from our campsite, uh, I think, about 3 a.m. And uh, this picture was shot somewhere, somewhere around uh, 6.30 in the morning. Uh, this, was, this was the peak of the winter, in, I think, late in December 2018. Uh, the mist tends to now light up as the sunrise during the sunrise especially, and tends to fade as the you know, sun comes out completely quickly. So again, as I said, uh, you have to be really you know, proficient with your camera settings uh, because the light and the weather change very quickly in this uh, high altitude. This was uh, uh, shot on the way to the Kedarkanda summit. I wanted to show the scale of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the incline that each of us uh, had uh, had to get through to reach the summit, and this was a very tricky shot because there was hardly a place for me to you know turn around and uh, not click this picture. What you're seeing, you, know, you I I only had a, you know place for resting my foot. Uh, so that was uh, the challenge about this photograph. This photograph was shot uh, at the summit of Sandakfu. Sandakfu is in West Bengal. Uh, and this is a sunset uh, picture. And you see the clouds swirling like river waters, right? Very beautiful sight. Uh, now, the moment I saw this shot, I wanted some human element to, to, to improve the composition. The, so I asked my friend, uh, you know, to pose for this photograph. So he immediately agreed to that. And, and you can see my friend sitting over there looking at the sun. And again, uh, Sandakfu is known for uh, heavy winds. All through the year, you or ex bound to experience heavy winds in this in this part of the world. Uh, another in, uh, fascinating aspect is is six months uh, from uh, September from September to March, this place experiences heavy winds and the temperatures are always uh, you know below minus five. So again, this was a very challenging. Uh, uh, photograph that I that I have clicked. This picture was uh, shot in Himachal Pradesh uh, during the Hamta Pass trek. Now Hamta Pass is a very beautiful trek. You know, it, you uh, you experience uh, you know every landscape from uh, from lush green uh, meadows to rocky mountains to to uh, you know, the snowy mountains. Everything you know, the gradual there's a gradual shift uh, that happens, and it's a very beautiful trek that you can experience. This was shot at 13,500 feet, I guess. You know, the, the dark clouds and the rocky mountains, you know, it gave me a very beautiful sight. This is among my best photographs till date. This was shot in Ladakh. Uh, during my uh, uh, Stoke Kangri expedition in 2017, September. Uh, again, uh, places like Ladakh and Himachal Pradesh are, are one of the best places to uh, you know, see the Milky Way. 
sometimes you get to see uh, the most beautiful night skies, provided the night skies are uh, you know uh, free of any clouds. So I was lucky enough to capture this uh, this photograph. The next day I had my summit attempt. My friends and other uh, uh, trek mates were inside the tents, you know, uh, taking this precious sleep. But uh, as with every trek, I, you know, uh, I have this habit of uh, coming back home with at least one night image. So I was lucky to get this picture uh, clicked. Yes, this is again one of my favorite photographs. I wanted to show you know the different dimensions. So, if you know uh, the two dots that you see on the far end are actually two people. They are our trek guides, and had they not been in this frame, this picture would have, wouldn't have been uh, you know uh, so dramatic as you see now. So what they are basically doing is laying a path for us to take. So they are basically, uh, you know, uh, guiding us you know, on the right path to take because on the snow, you never know which is the right path. It's very easy to get, uh, get lost in the snow because at, at some time, at, at some point, you know, uh, uh, the snow is rocky rock solid and sometimes it's uh, it's very uh, soft which can uh, pull you in so so it's very important uh, that you follow the instructions of uh, your trek leader or guides uh, luckily not yet <laughs> okay. but it happens right Yes, it happens, and it's very dangerous. Luckily, I haven't uh, experienced so far. Okay. This uh, is again taken from during my Sandakfu trek. Uh, the, the very first picture that you saw of Mount Kanchenjunga is on the other side of this mountain. This is also Mount Kanchenjunga. Mount Kanchenjunga, the full, the complete range of Mount Kanchenjunga from the from the West Bengal side. The very first picture that you saw is on the on the other side of the same mountain, Sikkim. So this is a very special image. Now this this particular uh, 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 pattern of mountains is usually referred to as uh, the Sleeping Buddha pattern. From the left to right, you can visualize uh, the head, the body, and the legs. So that's why this uh, pattern is called the sleeping Buddha pattern. There is very special in this image. This is again uh, shot during my uh, uh, my trekking uh, in the West Bengal. Uh, the house you now that you see is on. Uh, is on the Nepal side and there's a little uh, milestone kind of uh, structure right that you can see in the center of the image that is actually the border between India and Nepal so I would like to narrate one uh, interesting uh, phenomenon uh, interesting happening so a guy had uh, in our group had uh, mobile phone with uh, international roaming switched on so somehow he was able to uh, you know receive signals as he was crossing crisscrossing the, the borders so when he was on the nepal side of uh, this border which is just a few steps away from the milestone that you see so he was able to receive uh, international roaming uh, signals and and somehow uh, he was receiving a call probably he's from his home and he was speaking on his phone for some time and at the end of the end of the call he was charged in hefty amount something he was taken by surprise there is very interesting aspect during this trekking that we all experienced
How much? How much? I think it ran some close to nine hundred rupees <laughs> for uh, <laughs> five five minutes call. Mm. Yes, and this is an uh, image clicked on uh, the on uh, the popular uh, Dal Lake in Sri Nagar. This is very early in the morning, just around sunset. The you know the sky tends to be you know and it's very beautiful bluish color. And luckily, the clouds were also there, you know, and and this the boats that you see now uh, these are called uh, shikras in uh, in the local dialect. So um, I wanted to capture all these uh, in one uh, image. So luckily, the cloud patterns gave me an interesting uh, you know dimensions to this image. So this was featured in uh, Nat Geo Traveler, I think in June two thousand nineteen. This, uh, yeah, this uh, how many slides are uh, pending now? Uh, I think we're almost uh, getting to the end. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is again shot from uh, from the summit of uh, Gochala Gochala Pass. You the the one on the extreme left is uh, Mount uh, Kabru. Behind that is Mount Kanchenjunga. Followed by other uh, unnamed peaks. So I'm done with my presentation. You can follow my uh, travel blogs or stories in, on my social media. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. I have a question, right? So yes. Please. Normally, how many hours or how many days? Uh, a very easiest trek will need at least four to five days. Let's take uh, your uh, list of top for uh, fifty top ten days. Yes. Uh, number one, twelve thousand feet high. Right? Uh, How many days it takes? Okay, especially for people traveling from Chennai, Mumbai, from you know from the from the lower part of uh, the subcontinent, you will need at least. Uh, at least, you know, five days, including the trek. All your travel, trek, and getting back home, you need at least five days for the simplest trek. Because your travel is, your travel from home country, from you know, home state, and to the reporting point is going to take uh, a day, and coming back a day. So the simplest trek will need at least two to three days, excluding your travel from, you know, home state. For me, the the uh, the longest time I've I've been out of my home is uh, for a period of 16 days, and that was during my uh, expedition to Stoke Kangri in Ladakh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, we will go to feedback session. Um, feedback session where la Vijay. Okay. Uh, Shanti or the Ganga. Uh, Shanti, uh, feedback from the mass session. Every year, complete Shanti Lila Gila. Shanti. Hello. Uh, feedback of the good session. Every year, in Chebin. ஒரு <laughs> 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 Vijay, the photos are astonishing and uh, it shows your uh, effort in uh, taking those photos. I admire your photos actually. Uh, now I have a um, wish to go at least to do one trek to our uh, Himalayas. It was very you know, great ex experience that you shared with us. Thank, Thank you, so Vijay. 
ஓ வெங்கட் நீ தானா நான் தான் நான் தான் ஆ வெங்கட் இது விஜய் இப்ப ஒரு ட்ரிப்புக்கு எவ்வளவு சார்ஜ் வரும் விஜய் இப்போ நீங்க ட்ரெயின்ல போனீங்கன்னா ஒரு ஒரு விதமா சார்ஜ் வரும் फ्लाइटல போனீங்கன்னா ஒரு விதமா சார்ஜ் வரும் பட் ட்ரெக் ஃபார் வித்தவுட் அங்க எக்ஸ்பென்ஸ்லாம் பார்க்காம ட்ரெக்கிங் மட்டும் பாத்தீங்கன்னா மினிமம் 4000-5000 spend பண்ற மாதிரி இருக்கு மினிமம் ட்ரெக்கிங் மட்டும் अगेन நிறைய ட்ரெக்கிங் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் இருக்கு ஒரு ஒரு கம்பெனி ஒரு ஒரு மாதிரி சார்ஜ் பண்ணுவாங்க சோ மினிமம் யூ நீட் at least 5000 பட் கியர்லாம் வாங்குறதுக்கு அதுக்குரிய தனியா அதுக்கு தனியா ஒரு எக்ஸ்பெண்ட் ஆகும்ல கியர்லாம் வாங்குறோம்ல ஷூ வாங்குறோம் அந்த அந்த மாதிரி பிரச்சனை இருக்குல கரெக்ட் கியர்ஸ் வந்து அது வந்து எப்படி சொல்றது உங்களோட ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ட்ரெக்கிங் மட்டும் கொஞ்சம் தெரியாதுல <laughs> 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 complete on the marketing technique like in the gears na useful a irukum ninga rent edukona again it depends on person for example sir kar kudika rent edukiradhu ena someone else has used it mm-hmm. renting option is always available vijay uh, how much yeah. weight would be your backpack uh backpack when the if you are not carrying your camera or i mean camera in the sense you are uh, ds camera not mm. more than 7 uh, kg not more than, it sh- should not be more than right or uh, it can be or uh, maximum maximum it can touch 10 kg mine is about 9.5 kg 10 kg including okay yeah, mm. because beyond that okay, the weight carrying capacity porta sir <laughs> வெங்கடாங்க <laughs> 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 156 எது சொல்றீங்க ரொம்ப வருஷமா இத வந்து சும்மா ஃபவுண்டேஷன் கூட பண்றாரு சோ இட் ஷோஸ் ஹவ் மச் எஃபோர்ட் டேக்ஸ் ஆக்சுவலி சோ ரொம்ப வருஷம் அந்த ஒரு प्रिपरेशन இருந்தா தான் இந்த மாதிரி ட்ரிக்லாம் பண்ண முடியும் சோ நம்ம நினைக்கிறோம் நிறைய நேரம் போயிடு இந்த அஞ்சு நாள் தான் நம்ம அந்த அஞ்சு நாளோட முடிஞ்சிரல இல்லையா சோ விஜய் ஹஸ் புட் a lot and uh, he shows in his uh, uh, achievements and that's what we see so it's not going to come in on uh, day 5 right? so it's going to take a lot of days so uh, trekking or preparation or no so it's really uh, remarkable and the timing of the pictures fantastic i mean it was like a movie thrilling movie so nice presentation thank you thank you very much jana okay கணேஷ் உங்க ஃபீட்பேக் தர முடியுமா கணேஷ் கணேஷ் லைன்ல இருக்கீங்களா கணேஷ் கணேஷ் சாரி மியூட்ல இருந்துட்டேன் விஜய் இட் வாஸ் a great presentation um, uh, i really admire all your photographs uh, uh, i know how much effort you really like uh, to take and uh, how much you are passionate about your photography so wish you all the best it was a good presentation thank you very okay. much ganesh uh, uh, murli unga feedback tharamudiyama murli murli line la irkeengala
ಮುರಳಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಓಕೆ ಶಿವಕುಮಾರ್ ಸರ್ ಅಪ್ಡೇ ಫೀಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೀವಿ ಸರ್ ಜೀರೋಲ I mean, uh, up to summit, we have to stop. At some point of time, we have to stop. Trekking gives you that ability to, you know, uh, 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 sorry, lost my connection here. Okay, so, so with trekking, you know, uh, you have the ability to sketch your own path and uh, ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ಲೋ you know to direct go into the right path so anyway you will need uh, the local uh, local village lendu guide thevai padu ungalku to if you are not carrying any gps related uh, equipments or if you are in uh, you know sketching your own path ungalku uh, the guide thevai padu because he knows uh, the local weather conditions and uh, even if you get lost he will get back to you the right uh, place or you know he he can uh, guide you, you know uh, in, in in safety for safety purposes you will need someone uh, from the local village as a guide so you can starting point from there uh, you can easily uh, uh, find your way to the summit okay uh, okay panjanathan uh, sir unga feedback thavudima sir vijay romba nalla irundhathu ungalodade Uh, you must be really physically and mentally strong person lrt this is not at all possible <coughs> actually na vandu oru trail ladakh oda tour program onnu paathen avanga ta phone panni contact panni kekkumbodhu neenga vandu unga cardiologist age vandu 60 plus na oru anesthetist vijay na vandu avanga ketta po avanga vandu oru cardiologist illati pulmonologist la fit vaangittu vaanga nanga pulmonologist enak fit kuduttaaru பட் கார்டியாலஜிஸ்ட் கொடுக்க மாட்டேன்ட்டாரு ஸோ அதனால அந்த இது நான் போக முடியல அப்போ நான் வந்து தாமஸ்க்கு கிளப் போய் கேட்டேன் எங்க நீங்கள்லாம் என்ன ஃபிட்டு வாங்கிட்டாலே கூப்பிட்டு போறீங்க அப்படின்னு அப்போ அவர் சொன்னாரு நாங்கள் வந்து லே சிட்டி மட்டும்தான் சார் கூப்பிட்டு போவோம் நாங்கள் போய் ஒரு நாள் இறக்கி இளமுருவன் சார் நீ கேட்டீங்கல்ல உடனே வந்துருமான்னு இளமுருவன் சார் லைன்ல இருக்கீங்களா இல்லை அவர் இல்லை சார் போயிட்டாரா ஓ ஸோ அதை வந்து ஒரு நாள் அவங்க வந்து ரூமில் வந்து ரெஸ்ட் பண்ணிட்டு அப்புறம் நாங்கள் போவோம் அட் எனி டைம் பல்மேடி வந்தால் நாங்கள் பக்கத்தில் நியரஸ்ட் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் இருக்கும் ஓடிடுவோம் நீங்கள் ஃபோட்டோகிராஃபி போகும்போது சார் போகிறதெல்லாம் வந்து ரைட் ஃபார் அவே ஃப்ரம் த ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி இடத்துக்கெல்லாம் தான் ஃபிட்னஸ் ஜோனோ அப்படின்னாங்க விஜய் நீங்கள் வந்து டூ யூ கேர் ஆக்சிஜன் சிலிண்டர் நோ ஆக்சிஜன் சிலிண்டர் தேவைப்படாது சொல்ல முடியாதுல பல்வேடிமா கேன் கம் அட் எனி டைம் 
Oh. Uh, oxygen levels on this shouldn't drop below 90 percentage. Uh, 90 percent, if it falls below 90, yeah. you, should, you should not be allowed to carry with your uh, packing yeah. for. Uh, you, know, the, you know, the Stoke uh, and the expedition, Lavandu, we were a group of 10. Uh, Lavandu, only three were allowed to proceed. All yeah. of them sent back because their oxygen uh, blood levels were uh, dropping below 80. So, 80 is very dangerous. Below 90 is the problem. Na. So, it's better to carry the oxygen cylinder. You said that Diamax. Diamax, actually, you have to start taking uh, in the land itself. Correct. Uh, it is given for uh, eye problem, glaucoma. Many patients Correct. are taking uh, Diamax, but uh, complications are not that uh, uh, life-threatening, as you said. But it is relatively harmless. But any drug will have any, all drugs will have complications. But Dimax is not that much dangerous. Uh, diuretics, uh, hypertensive drugs, and the Marla, I don't carry Pandrangla. Usually, I don't take any tablets. No. <laughs> and my, I, I don't, uh, I, I take some of my friends along with me and I advise them not to take any tablets. Oh. I give them some uh, uh, small. Uh, uh, tips or tricks. No, no, every every forty minutes, I keep on sipping water. So what this okay. entails, uh, you know, it balances the oxygen level in the body. Only once or twice I've experienced uh, acute mountain sickness, and even then, uh, you know, I have managed to come out of it by sipping in regular water and taking adequate rest and not exerting too much, like walking faster. Yeah, that is true. Altitudes are gaining altitude too 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 quickly. Actually, now on the highest point in Alps, uh, Switzerland, the Jungsberg is around 11,000 feet height. That's mm -hmm. why I was able to tolerate up to 11,000. Mm -hmm. But when you say that the ground level they take by lift, all of mm -hmm. a sudden you are exposed to 11,000 feet. Mm -hmm. For 5,000-6,000 feet, all of a sudden you are exposed to 11,000. Some of them developed uh, giddiness and all those things. They were uh, not allowed to go further, go out of the, and the rest area out to very very cold. Okay. They just sat there and came back. They didn't see anything. Okay. Actually, 8,000 feet to melt upon the oxygen saturation for the chances on the. So, you know, 19,000 long point under the king, that's up to you. But you know, now the presentation, I didn't want to disturb you. Uh, the mechanism of pulmonary. Uh, Edema is a little different. It is not carbon dioxide, it is uh, culprit. It is oxygen okay. that is the culprit. Okay. As you go high, normally the atmospheric air will have 21% of oxygen. Right. And 78 to 79% of carbon dioxide and the inert gases. Right. As you go up, the partial pressure of oxygen will drop down. Correct. The percentage of oxygen will drop down. Correct. First, the hypoxia will come. Correct. Because of the hypoxia, the blood vessels in the lung will go for constrictions. That right. will precipitate uh, pulmonary edema. Okay. So actually, in the pocket lung, lung or go, and the pocket of pulmonary artery or go, between interstitial tissue or go. Okay. Interstitial fluid or go. Okay. And the pulmonary vessel constriction, when the fluid started leaking out, right. up on the okay. and the interstitial fluid, when the layer, very thick layer. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is not going to be in carbon dioxide. Okay. So, oxygen will be in your lung, mm -hmm. carbon dioxide will be in your blood. Okay. In between uh, interstitials, okay. thinner, it becomes because of pulmonary edema, it becomes a thick uh, layer. Right. So, right. because of that, the carbon dioxide gets accumulated. All right. So, carbon dioxide is not able to cross the interstitial fluid and come out of the lung. Come out, right? Yeah. So, first, Problem is oxygen. Other than that, oxygen could sometimes it becomes all right. All right. So, you know, Romba correct on hyperbaric oxygen that is not at all possible on the area of the Nenech put up a kumbi. You know, learning a dehydration something there is one condition known as insensible. Boradigna, Romba medicine, Romba Saldana. Please carry on. Insensible loss known as. You know, you shall have the Tani Kurikringa, Sap Ringa, and body also generates water. Last on the urine, motion, sweating, and respiration. Right. 
நீங்க கண்ணாடி முன்னாடி போய் ப்ளவ் எக்ஸ்பிரேட்டரி ஏர் யூ வில் யூ கேன் சி ஹியூமிடிஃபைடு ஏர் கிளாஸ்ல தட் மீன்ஸ் யூ இன்ஹேல் ட்ரை ஏர் ட்ரை ஏர் யுவர் பாடி அந்த உங்க பாடி டெம்பரேச்சருக்கு அந்த ஏரை வந்து ஹீட் பண்ணிடும் ஹீட் பண்ணிட்டு அதை வந்து ஹியூமிடிஃபையும் பண்ணும் ஸோ கோல்டு ஏர் வரும்போது அது வந்து நிறைய இட் லூசஸ் லாட் ஆஃப் எனர்ஜி இன் வார்மிங் வார்மிங் அப் தட் ஏர் அண்ட் ஹியூமிடிஃபையிங் தட் ஏர் அதனால தான் ஐ திங்க் தே பிகம் ஈஸிலி டீஹைட்ரேஷன் நினைக்கிறேன் ஐ டோன்ட் நோ அது என்னன்னு ஸோ ஹியூமிடிஃபைடு இது தென் க்ளவ் சிவகுமார் சார் கேட்டார் சிவகுமார் சார் லைன்ல இருக்கீங்களா விஜயகுமார்ஸ்ட்டிட்டு ஆயிரும் அது டோட்டலே ரொம்ப சில்லு இருக்கும் சோ 2 லேயர் க்ளவ் போட்டுறோம் फर्स्ट லேயர் க்ளவ் கழட்டிட்டு செகண்ட் லேயர் க்ளவ்ல நீங்க வந்து இன்டெக்ஸ் finger எடுத்தீங்கனா மூணு கிரீஸ் இருக்கும் அத டாப் கிரீஸ்ல 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock வந்து அந்த க்ளவ் கட் பண்ணிருப்பாப்ல அது அப்படியே உரிச்சிட்டு ஆல் fingers will be covered இன்டெக்ஸ் இன்டெக்ஸ் fingerல அந்த டாப் கிரீஸ் கி மேல இருக்கது மட்டும் எக்ஸ்போஸ் ஆகும் நான் சொல்றது புரியுதா அப்படி இருக்கு ஸோ அப்போ அதை வந்து நீங்கள் வந்து கிளிக் பண்ணிவிட்டு இமீடியட்டாக அதை ரோல் பண்ணி அந்த இண்டெக்ஸ் ஃபிங்கரோட டாப் ஃபேஸ் கவர் பண்ணி செகண்ட் க்ளவை போட்டணும் நீங்கள் கம்ப்ளீட் க்ளவை கலட்டினீங்கன்னா ஃபோட்டோ எடுக்கிறதுன்னு கலட்டினீங்கன்னா அது அவர் சொல்கிற குளோரில் எல்லாம் அது நிச்சயம் அவர் ஃபிட் பர்சன்ட்ரான தாங்கியிருக்காரு அதர் பீப்புள்லாம் ரொம்ப கஷ்டமாக இருந்திருக்கும் இந்த இடத்துல போகிறதே கஷ்டம் ஃபோட்டோலாம் எடுத்துகிட்டு வந்திருக்காருனா சூப்பர் சூப்பர் டூப்பர் தான் அண்ட் வாட்டர் ப்யூரிஃபிகேஷன் அந்த குளோரின் டேப்லெட் யூஸ் பண்ணுறீங்களா விஜயகுமார் அதஸ் ஆமா அது நிறைய பேர் குளோரின் டேப்லெட்ஸ் எடுத்து வராங்க பட் ஐ ஹேவ் a ட்ரெடிஷனல் ஃபில்டர் ஃபிட்டட் இன்டு மை வாட்டர் பாட்டில் ஓகே ஓகே ஓவரால் ரொம்ப நல்ல எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் நான் போக ஆசைப்பட்டது என்னால போக முடியல அதனால சார் எப்படி சொல்றீங்க என்ன தடவை சொல்லுங்க அந்த எப்படி இது பண்றதுன்னா ஏதா அந்த ஐல க்ளவ்ஸ் சொன்னீங்கல ஆமா க்ளவ்ஸ் க்ளவ்ஸ் பத்தி சொன்னீங்கல அத கேக்குறாரு க்ளவ் சார் 2 லேயர் போட்டுறோம் சார் உள்ள ஒரு உலன் க்ளவ் மேல இன்னொரு க்ளவ் போட்டுறோம் ஓகே யூசுவலா ரெண்டு லேயர் க்ளவ் போட்டுறேன் நான் ரொம்ப கோல்டா இருக்க ஏரியாக்கு போறது ஓகே ஃபர்ஸ்ட் க்ளவ் கலட்டிட்டு நீங்க வந்து மேனேஜ் பண்ணலாம் உள்ள வந்து உலன் க்ளவ் இருக்கும் போது நீங்க மேல வந்து ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் லெதர் க்ளவ் போட்டுக்கிங்க வெச்சிங்க லெதர் க்ளவ் கலட்டிட்டீங்கனா உள்ள வந்து உங்களுக்கு உலன் க்ளவ் இருக்கும் ஓகே அப்ப பெருசா குளுராது நீங்க அந்த உலன் க்ளவே கலட்டிட்டீங்கனா கலட்டி மாட்டுறதுக்குள்ள போட்டோ எடுக்கிறதுக்குள்ள உங்களுக்கு ரொம்ப குளிர்ந்து குளிர் ரொம்ப கை ஃப்ரீஸ் ஆயிரும் ஓகே இன்டெக்ஸ் ஃபிங்கர் இருக்குல்ல நான் சொல்றதே உங்க கையை நீட்டிட்டு நீங்க பாருங்க ஒன்னு ரெண்டு மூணு கோடு இருக்குல்ல ஆமா மூணாவது கோடுல 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock கட் பண்ணிருங்க சரி 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock இப்படி திருப்பி சுத்தி வந்தீங்கன்னா அந்த பக்கம் இருக்கும் இன்டாக்டா இருக்கும் க்ளவ் சோ நீங்க வந்து அப்படி தொப்பி மாதிரி அப்படி உரிச்சு எடுத்துடலாம் லேச விரல மடக்கிட்டு அந்த இதை உரிச்சிடலாம் உரிச்சிட்டீங்கன்னா அந்த டாப் மோஸ்ட் கிரீஸ்க்கு மேல இருக்க பிங்கர் மட்டும் எக்ஸ்போஸ்டா இருக்கும் உங்களுக்கு ஃப்ரீயா இருக்கும் ஆல் அதர் உங்களுக்கு வந்து ஃபார்ம் இந்த நாலு பிங்கரும் வந்து கம்ப்ளீட்லி கவர்டு வித் கிளவ் இண்டெக்ஸ் பிங்கர்லயும் ஒன்னு ரெண்டு கோடு வரைக்கும் கவர்டு வித் கிளவ் இமேஜின் பண்ண முடியுதா நான் சொல்றது ஆ அந்த மேல இருக்கிற அந்த சின்ன போர்ஷன் மட்டும் அப்படி சொல்றீங்களா சார் ஆ அப்படி கட் பண்ணி உரிச்சு எடுத்துக்கு மேல இருக்க மேல நுனி இருக்கிற ஒரு சின்ன பிட் இல்லீங்களா 3 3 போர்ஷன்ஸ் இருக்கல அந்த மேல இருக்க நுனி மட்டும் தெரியும் கம்ப்ளீட்டா கட் பண்றது இல்ல 360 ல வந்து 180 டிகிரி மட்டும் தான் கட் பண்ணுவீங்க இந்த அது அப்படி தரந்து வெளியில போட்டு போட்டு எடுத்துறமா ஒரு அந்த கோட்டுக்கு என்ன கோட போட்டு அதுக்குள்ள வெளிய வரல விட்டுறோம் வெளிய வேற வேற கட்டற மாதிரி வெச்சிருக்கோம் ஸ்லிட் தான் பண்ணனும் கம்ப்ளீட்டா கட் பண்ண வேண்டாம் ஸ்லிட் பண்ணா ஃப்ரீஸ் ஆகும் அது அப்போ ஃப்ரீஸ் ஆகும் தானே சார் உங்களுக்கு எக்ஸ்போஸ் ஆகுறது ஒரு ஒரு ஃபிங்கர்ல ஒரு டிஜி ஒரு ஒரு பாமர் கிரீஸ் மேல உள்ள தான் சார் ஓகே ஓகே ஐ ஃபுல்லா எக்ஸ்போஸ் ஆகுறது எப்படி அந்த வித்ரூண்டு ஒரு போஷன் எக்ஸ்போஸ் ஆகுறது எப்படி அந்த போர்ஷன் மட்டும் அந்த பக்கம் மட்டும் 
பண்றாரு <laughs> எல்லாமே <laughs> 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 உங்களுக்கு <laughs> 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 ஒரு பேட்டரி மினிமம் 4 and 1/2 days to 5 days solid-ஆ வரும். பேட்டரி சார்ஜ் கேமரால வந்து मोस्टலி எல்லா நான் எசன்ஷியல் ஃபீச்சர்ஸ் நான் சுவிட்ச் ஆஃப் பண்ணிடுவேன். ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் இமேஜ் ரிவ்யூ கேமரா சவுண்ட் பீப் அதெல்லாம் அந்த மாதிரி நிறைய விஷயம் நான் ஸ்டாப் பண்ணிடுச்சு ஆஃப் பண்ணிடுவேன். சோ ஃபோட்டோ எடுத்துட்டு ஐ ஐ டோன்ட் ரிவ்யூ தி போட்டோகிராஃப். ஓகே. அப்புறம் போது ஐ will make sure everything is right. I'll click and switch off. At night when you uh, know uh, the weather cool agum bodu i trim the battery keep it in my uh, you know jacket wind jacket and i'll uh, get inside the, the sleeping bag sleeping bag la it is really comfortable warm a irukum so that preserves battery charge oh okay 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 romba nalla illa na vera mari one kelvi patta clip as close as to the body temperature apdi solluvanga jacket ku la So, our body warm up and the heat is going to be maintained in the company. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. 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 Sir, camera warm up, you will be a hypothermic. Because the camera warm up is going to be a body in the heat. Okay. Okay. ஓகே தேங்க்ஸ் விஜய் அப்புறம் வந்துட்டு இப்போ நான் வந்துட்டு இதுக்கு போயிருக்கேன் அது கொழுக்குமலை ட்ரக்கிங் போயிருக்கேன் கொழுக்குமலை தெரியும் நினைக்கிறேன் உங்களுக்கு இந்த மீசப்பள்ளி மலை இருக்கு இல்லையா நடக்கும் <laughs> 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 சோ அந்த மாதிரி ட்ரக் இல்லாம எனக்கு வந்து பிளைன்ஸ் ஏ நடக்க போறதா நடக்க போலாம் சோ அந்த மாதிரி நமக்கு அங்க ட்ரக்கிங்லாம் இருக்கா இல்ல எல்லா இடத்துலயுமே கொஞ்சம் எஜ்ஜு மாதிரி தான் இருக்குமா இல்ல நிறைய இருக்கு கர்நாடகால இருக்கு நிறைய ட்ரக்கிங் இருக்கு கர்நாடகால இல்ல நான் சொல்றது இங்க சொல்றேன் நீங்க காமிச்ச ஏரியால ஹிமாலயஸ்ல நிறைய ஐ மீன் உத்தரகண்ட்ல நிறைய இந்த மாதிரி ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் இருக்கு ஈஸி ட்ரக்கிங் ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் 2 டேஸ்ல பண்ணிடலாம் பட் இங்க சொல்ற ஒரு மூவி பார்க்க முடியும் கரெக்ட் ஆமா ஒருவோம் Average or 5 km. Tough km. Tough km. Tough km. Tough km. So, do you have a lot of slope? Steep? Yes, it's steep. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Thanks for the session. Thank you very much. Karthik, how do you give your feedback? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh... ரொம்ப எதிர்பார்த்துட்டு இருந்தேன் விஜய் ஆயினோ ஃபார் த பாஸ்ட் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் லெவன் நைன் இயர்ஸ் ஐ திங் ஒரு ஸ்ட்ரேஞ்சர் எப்படி நாங்க ரெண்டு பேரும் பீச்சில தான் பார்த்தோம் பீச்சில 
ரெண்டு பேரும் கேமரா தூக்கிட்டு ஒரு இயர்லி டேஸ்ல டூ தௌசண்ட் லெவன் டென்ல கேமரா தூக்கிட்டு அப்பதான் ஸ்டார்டிங் ஸ்டார்டிங் கேனன் கேமரா வாங்கி ஒரு ஒன் இயர் டூ இயர் கழிச்சு இல்ல விஜய் ஆமா கரெக்ட் ஒன்ட்ரெட் <laughs> ஒரேங்கிங் <laughs> <laughs> இன்னைக்கு இவ்வளவு டீப்பா இன்னும் நிறைய டீப் தெரியாது எனக்கு ஸோ இதனால தான் ஆல்ரெடி சிவக்கிட்ட இருக்குன்னு பேசினது இந்த மாதிரி நம்ம டீமுக்கு டீ மே ஹாவ் அ குட் கைடன்ஸ் ஆன் ஹவு டு குரூப் அட் ட்ரெக்கிங் லாட் பீப்புள் மே வாண்டட் டு கோ நிறைய பேருக்கு தெரியும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி ஸோ ஈவன் ஐ ஆல்சோ வாண்டட் டு நோ அதை நான் வந்து இந்த குரூப் மூலமா இன்னைக்கு நான் பார்த்துட்டேன் ஸோ ஐ ஆம் ஸோ ஹாப்பி இந்த பீப்புள் இஸ் ஸோ நைஸ் அண்ட் ரொம்ப நல்லா இருக்கு விஜய் ஆக்சுவலி பேசிக்கா என்ன வேணுமோ கட் ஷார்ட் ரொம்ப சிம்பிளா டீடைல்டா சார் சொன்ன மாதிரி ஒரு செஷன் ஒரு கிளாஸுக்கு ப்ரீ ட்ரெக்கிங் கிளாஸ் போயிட்டு வந்த மாதிரி தான் இருக்கு இப்போதைக்கு சார் வி நீட் டு ஹாவ் அ லாட் ஆஃப் ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் எல்லாம் தெரியுது லெட் மீ சி ஹவு என்ன கெட்ட சான்ஸ் டு கோ ட்ரெக் வித் யூ நிறைய தடவை ட்ரை பண்றேன் வர முடியல பார்க்கலாம் ஓகே ஸோ நைஸ் ஸோ அண்ட் தேங்க்ஸ் யூவா ஃபார் கெட்டிங் திஸ் செஷன் டைட்டில் பார்த்தேனே எனக்கு புரிஞ்சிச்சு இவ்வளவுதான்ட்டு நான் இமிடியேட்டா வந்துட்டேன் थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू கார்த்திக் थैंक यू शिवा ओके ओके நம்ம செஷன் முடிச்சு நடக்கறோம் அமில்தினி சார் செஷன் நான் வந்துட்டு க்ளோஸ் பண்றேன் நீங்க லாஸ்டா தான் வந்தீங்க அதனால தான் ஃபீட்பேக் சொல்ல விரும்ப பண்றீங்களா இல்ல க்ளோஸ் பண்ணலாம் இல்ல நான் ஆல்ரெடி கிட்டத்தட்ட உங்க டிஸ்கஷன்ல தான் இப்ப நான் கலந்துட்டேன் நீ பேசிட்டு இருக்கும்போது சாரோட Facebook பேஜ் போய் பார்த்தேன் ஒரு <laughs> <laughs> ஒரு ஒரு வேறு விதமான உணர்வு அதை அது வரைக்கும் பண்ணது இல்லாம மாதிரி நீங்க கூட அடிக்கடி போயிருக்கீங்க இப்போ உங்க போட்டோஸ்லாம் நான் பாத்துருக்கேன் சிவா சார் கூட போயிருக்காரு சோ அது ஒரு நல்ல ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி நம்ம ஒன்பிளிக் சார்பா நம்ம ஒரு ஒரு அரேஞ்ச்மெண்ட் ஒரு பெரிய அளவுல இல்லைன்னாலும் கூட நன்றிங்க <laughs> 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 Uh, actually, uh, Vijay nowadays has been also guiding trek. So, uh, sorry for saying that there are uh, many easy treks for the Himalayan side. La, uh, uh, Vijay can help us at any time. Okay, okay. Definitely, definitely. Surely. Okay. Yeah, he's already actually started doing uh, his guiding nowadays. I think. Bath, 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 bath. Okay, so okay. he may uh, try for something in the coming days for easy treks at Himalaya uh, where we can go and if we can go and 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 we
ஸ்லைடா போடு சார் ஆ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்லைடு போங்க ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ரெண்டாவது ஸ்லைடு அந்த லிஸ்ட் போட்டுறீங்கல்ல ஹாப்பா <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the preparation also has to go through physical uh, endurance test and mari panni panna nalla irukum nenaikku jay kumar sir adu mini long term mari pannunga vijay shiva neenga na panna mudiyum sathi sari vijay sir adu hamta easy endra 14000 irukku adukku mele or 11000 irukku adu kashtam irukuma 11000 la undu sandakshu undu right kuda kuda engalukku oxygen prachana மத்தபடி <laughs> 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 கார்த்திக் சார் அது ஒன்னு ஹைட் குறச்சல இல்ல 14000 பாத்துக்கிங்க 14000 ஃபீட் வந்து at least ஒரு 6 டேஸ் தேவைப்படும் ஏனா you are not gaining altitude quickly gradually அதனால தான் 6 டேஸ் சந்தக் ஃபோ வந்து can complete in 2 டேஸ் சோ நீங்க அந்த एक्चुअली ஹாவ் அ டாப் ஸ்டேஷன் ட்ரை பண்ணுங்க டாப் ஸ்டேஷன் கொளுக்குமலை ட்ரை பண்ணுங்க சார் ஒரு ஐடியா கிடைக்கும் உங்களுக்கு டாப் ஸ்லிப் சொல்றீங்களா டாப் ஸ்டேஷனா டாப் ஸ்டேஷன் டாப் ஸ்லிப் வந்துட்டு பொள்ளாச்சி ஆமா அது வந்து டாப் ஸ்டேஷன் வந்துட்டு உங்க ஊர்ல தான் இருக்கு கிட்டத்தட்ட போடி நாயக்கன் ஒரு இருக்கு இல்லையா போடியில இருந்து நமக்கு ஜீப் இருக்கு அமில்தனி சார் போடி பக்கம் தான் சார் அமில்தனி சார் லைன் லைக் சார் இருக்கும் சார் சுவா சார் கூட வந்துட்டு போயிட்டாரு நாம இன்னும் போலையே போலாம் <laughs> 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 ரொம்ப ஸ்டீனரிக்கெல்லாம் ரொம்ப அவ்வளோ சூப்பராக இருக்கும் சார் என்ஜாய் பண்ணலாம் நீங்கள் ஃபோட்டோகிராஃபி செம்ம நேச்சுரலாக இருக்கும் செம்ம ராவான ஏரியா ரொம்ப ரிஸ்க் சார் பஞ்சநாதன் சார் நீங்கள் வந்து இது கூட போகலாம் நீங்கள் செம்ரா பீக் போகலாம் வயநாடு செம்ரா பீக் போயிருக்கீங்களா வயநாடு போனதில்லை சார் இல்லை நான் எந்த ட்ரெக்கிங் போனதில்லை செம்ரா பீக் அதுக்கு ஆக்சுவலி என்னன்னா வந்து இப்போ சீசன்ல தான் மட்டும் திறந்துருக்கும் அக்டோபர் நவம்பர் டிசம்பருக்கு மேல மட்டும் தான் திறந்திருக்கும் அப்புறம் ஃபோர் மந்த்ஸ் ஃபைவ் மந்த் அடித்த பிரைவேட் எஸ்டேட் ஆக்சுவலி வி ஹாவ் டு கோ ஆஸ் அர்லி ஆஸ் த்ரீ ஓ கிளாக் ஃபோர் ஓ கிளாக் எல்லாம் உள்ள போயிடும் ஏன்னா பர் டே ஒன்லி ஒன் ஃபிஃப்டி டு டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் பர்சன்ட் ஆர் ஒன்லி அலவுட் ஓகே ஓகே அங்க போய் கேட்ல போய் எல்லாம் வீடியோ காலத்துல மூணு மணிக்கு நாலு மணிக்கு போய் நான் உட்காந்துட்டேன் அப்புறம் அன்னைக்கு எதுவும் எங்க நாங்க அப்பவே ட்ரெக்கிங் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆகிடும் வீடியோ காத்தாலேயே பட் என்னன்னா பார்த்தா அன்னைக்கு யானை வந்து பக்கத்துலயே வந்து உட்காந்துச்சு ரெண்டு யானை காத்து யானை கேட்டு பக்கத்துல உட்காந்தனால எயிட் ஓ கிளாக் மேலதான் எங்களால போக முடிஞ்சது அது வந்து ஒன் டே ட்ரெக் தான் அதாவது இடிச்ச ஒரு தான் அது இப்ப மேல போயிட்டீங்கன்னா Sure, sure. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Vijay. Bye.